So guys, today we are in Vienna, approaching Rathausplatz, City Hall Square and Burgtheater, this theater on the left side. I want to show you a little bit the city today. Burgtheater here is the headquarters of the central so the, the, of the SPÖ of the Social Democratic Party in Austria here is Café Landmann many press conferences are held here and they have quite many beautiful sorts of coffee on Radersplatz as you can see here on the right in uh, July, August, there is a film festival. It's every year where they show um, certain concerts and uh, pop concerts, rock concerts, classical concerts, operas, operettas, musicals and such things on a big video wall. So that's every year in summer. Let's see what they have today. So today is the 11th of August of 2018. That's the theater. Biggest German speaking uh, theater. of June until 2nd of September so whole July and the whole August this film festival is here let's see what they have today mm. 11th of August August 16 Cheers. and there's opera tomorrow Verdi Swan Lake, Ray Charles, Romeo and Juliet, Mac, Lily Miserable, Summer Concert, and so on. Let's take this with you. So, here are nice bars. You can sit here, drink a wine, eat something. Have ice cream. Alright, what a beautiful atmosphere here. It's the city hall building on this side and the book tent on the other side. Palm trees. So that's where the film festival takes place, all for free. We, there are seats here and here on the side. Many tourists always in the city. And that's the city hall building. With uh, the mayor, the figure of the mayor of the Middle Ages at the top of 
the tower. Generally here on uh, the city hall square, Rathausplatz, there's always events. There's in winter there is ice skating and in autumn several festivals. Always high life here. On the side there are also restaurants and the fountain. I'm gonna walk, walk through here. Right in, in June, I think, before the film festival, there's always the live ball, this live ball event, which is pretty spectacular as well. So we're gonna walk here and try to go to this park here, that's Volksgarten. On the right there is the, there's the parliament, but there's construction work, so there's not, it's not so beautiful right now. Let's go on. Yep, car riding. This very part of the Volksgarten is called Rosengarten, Rose Garden, because there are all roses everywhere. And it's pretty beautiful because here every rose is dedicated to somebody. Or was donated by somebody. And this and there are also these these sayings included here. Eine Rose für dich und dein Wien. A rose for you and your Vienna. Sometimes there are also beautiful texts like here. This rose is meant for Renate, a woman with a good heart and courage. Who is always here for one, for me. Thank you that you are here, mom. So her daughter donated this rose to her mom. Every rose has 
Ganze Main, Benjamin Becken. Pour Mongolie, chérie. For Christa, my angel. For Maria. And every rose has, has such a sign. It's very beautiful. Impressed. This building in the back is the Natural History Museum. Gonna go there later. But first, I want to show you some other things. Because here, a little bit hidden, actually this here, this strange building, this black building here, is the air conditioning of the Burgtheater, of the theater here. This leads right to, to the top, it's connected to the top ceiling of the book town that's very interesting also makes the book town to stay a bit chill so and right here is the hidden jewel some tourists uh, they don't even see that because here is a statue of Sisi very beautiful done, very romantic, if you're into that. Fountains. Here's the statue, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, Empress of Austria, Sissi. One of the main reasons why many uh, tourists come here is Sissi actually. Next thing I'm about to show you is the Theseus Temple, the Temple of Theseus, I guess, which is this white building. They renovated it like 20 years or something ago. Since then, it's all white. It was more gray before. Also, it's very popular to make photos here between the columns. It's a nice photo motif. And here is also often music, guitar players, singers who sit right here between the columns. Inside of the temple, there is sometimes a, an exhibition. Parliament here, full of construction work because they're renovating the the roof. The roof is there came water inside the roof, so it's, they have to build a new roof. Ah, it's open actually. Cool. Yeah, the Tezos Temple. 
neoclassical building. Statue, young athlete. It's the young athlete. Let's see what they have here. It's always for free normally here. One little exhibition. It's very small actually. Modern art. This little cafe here, Meierei, Cafe Meierei, was one of the favorite cafes of Thomas Bernhard, the author. He sat here and drank coffee because it's quite, quite quiet here. You hear, you hear the the birds, and it feels like not being in a big city. Um, there's another statue of a rider that I want to show you. So here I still want to show you the Grillparzer monument, who was a famous playwright. You look at the view, beautiful. That's the monument of Grillparzer, an Austrian playwright. Look how beautiful it's done. The symbol that he was, is an author, is that he holds a book in his left hand. And here are scenes depicted from his plays. Die Ahnfrau, der Traum, ein Leben, König Ottokas Glück und Ende, Sapfo, Medea und des Meeres und der Liebe Wellen. Here, actually, behind the Grillparzer monument, there is the Club Volksgarten. If you're into disco, you can go there as well. And next to the Volksgarten of Voga, there is the Säulenhalle. It's also a club disco. There's Volksgarten Pavillon. Also here, also a club. So here we're going to leave the Volksgarten. And we are on Heldenplatz, Heroes Square. The biggest square of Vienna and most beautiful. There are also roses actually. Behind the roses you can see Ballhausplatz. The building where the flags are on the left and on the right. Here. This building on the right with the two flags is where the Austrian president has his office. And the building on the left is where the Chancellor 
the prime minister has his office. And they say whenever the flag is out, it means that the president or the chancellor is in, ta in, in Austria. So this is Hero Square, Heldenplatz. On the left and on the right, you see these black buildings that were built because, as I told you, the, the parliament is under construction work. They improved the roof. So some offices, some parties, or maybe all, I'm not sure actually, they had to get out of the parliament and now they have their offices here in these black buildings. This will be for some years and when the roof is finished these black buildings will be removed and it will be more meadow here. Oh, here is a here is a sign. Many things to see here. So uh, Heldenplatz is named after heroes, after two heroes, which is this guy, which is Archduke Charles, and on the other side, Prince Eugene of Savoy, who was a great military man. Archduke Charles. Here. Won many battles. Den beharrlichen Kämpfer für Deutschlands Ehre. Deutschland was a Germany, was that at that time actually not the country we have it now. Deutschland, every German speaking little country was called Deutschland. So it was built 1859, Archduke Charles. And this is actually very famous because the monument. <laughs> Can you see it here? <laughs> the weight of the monument is just on. Let's go on the other side. We don't see it from here. Can't see it from here. The weight of the monument is just on the back, on the back legs of the horse. That's the interesting thing here. <laughs> That's Hofburg on the left, where the president's office is. Many tourists here always. So that place where the many flags are is a United Nations organization, it's the OSZE, Organisation für Sicherheit und Zusammenarbeit für Europa, Organisation for Security and Cooperation in Europe, it's a UN organization. Behind Eugene of Savoy, there's the National Library, Nationalbibliothek, Österreichische Nationalbibliothek, where many students also sit in beautiful rooms and learn for the exams.
that's actually the place where uh, in the 30s a man spoke to the public and all the crowd was cheering to him here. to guess who that was. Our beautiful golden eagle here with two heads. The one head representing Austria, the other head representing Hungary. So the Emperor of Austria was always also the king of Hungary. Austro-Hungarian Emperor at that time until the First World War. Let's go here inside the Hofburg. Go inside Hofburg. So that's inside Hofburg. Here is the Schweizer Tor, the Swiss gate. It's the oldest part of Hofburg. Beautiful. Beautiful lion statues. Ferdinandus, Rom, German, Hungar, Böhm, Cerex. In far his park. Beautiful tongue he has. Let's read this. Imperial Palace of Vienna. Served as the residence of the Habsburgs, a dynasty of rulers of large parts of Europe for some 700 years. The Habsburg Empire was a multi ethnic, multi religious empire that had a strong political, administrative, social, and economic impact on territories that include or are part of today's Austria and Hungary, as well as other Central and Southeastern European states. It features on the European Union's list of European heritage sites because of the significant role it plays in the history and culture of Europe. And right here, actually, there is the crown jewels. There's the museum of crown jewels. You can see this. That's the main attraction, actually. You can see this crown of the... <coughs> these two crowns. This is the Austro-Hungarian Emperor crown. And this is the crown of the Roman Empire. Germination. Holy Roman Empire of German nations. I don't know actually, there's also construction work. Is, is that open? Where was the entrance? Ah, here was the entrance. If you want to see these crowns live, you have to go here. Let's go back to the main square. So here to the left, where the Austrian flag is, that's where the Austrian president resides. And here is the statue of Franz the first, who lived when Napoleon lived, so who lived at about 1800. And you can see here's 
he's wearing a Roman costume looking like a Roman because he was the ruler of the Holy Roman Empire German nations that's why he was the son the son of Maria Theresa and fought also against Napoleon and then he gave his daughter Josephine to Napoleon to marry and the rest is history all very beautiful he is also the crown of the Holy Roman Emperor and that's the cupola of the book here we're gonna walk through these gate with the giants from Greek mythology these big giants as guards beautiful some sweets so that's all for free here you don't have to pay here seeing this stuff So we're gonna see here the ceiling. Very nice. On this side, behind the horses, there's the Spanish Hofwartschule, Spanish Hofwartschule, Spanish riding school, where they also have shows. You can buy a ticket and see them riding with the white horses if you're into horses and horse riding it's very spectacular and amazing what they do with, with the horses are capable of the lipizzana they're called lipizzana horses <laughs> hello guys on this side there's the Sissi Museum. Museum about Sissi. Silver Collection Imperial Apartment. So if you're if you like Sissi, go here. It's closed now. So it's Saturday 5.30. So let's walk out of here. And we are at Michaela Platz, where all the horses always stand. Fiaca, the carriages are always here. Small tour, 55 euro. Big tour, 40 minutes, 80 euro. Okay. Here are also giants protecting the gates, creek giants and fish. Let's see this from the far. Scenes with an eagle. Nice. It's mm, a fast. Oh, that's Kaffee Klimt now. It used to be Greenstadl. It's new. So let's here go over here. That's it. That's the entrance from the inner city. Hofburg. Franz Josef the first built it. Francisco Josef Josephus Primus. 
counterfeited in 1893 it was finished beautiful here at the gate it says it says f j1 that's the councils of the first who built it here are roman roman ruins also the romans were here The ruins preserved here give us a glimpse into the history of Michaelaplatz from the time of the Romans until the late 19th century. They were uncovered in 1990 during archaeological excavations carried out by the Archaeology, Archaeology Institute Wien. And here this is Michaela Kirche, Michaela Church. It's a very nice and beautiful. That's the statue of the Saint Michael. So that they're not the same, they're actually the arch, arch archangel, angel Michael, with the fiery sword. This on this building here, Metastasio lived. A playwright who wrote libretti, text for opera, and this This church is really uh, famous for one thing. Because you can visit the catacombs here. And there are also mummies. You can see two or three mummies from the 17th or 18th century. At Metastasio, this libertist is this tomb is here. That's very interesting. I did this too once. It's a great tour. But you see live mummies. So if you're lighthearted, maybe it's not for you. What's this? And the entrance to the catacombs. It's not for free. It's you have to pay and then you go here over here and through the left door here right here the stars is lying under here and this would be the door to the catacombs it's a pieta So when we go out here and turn to the right, we are at the Kohlmarkt. That's the most expensive lane in whole Vienna. There is Karl Lagerfeld. There is Loro Piano. There is Gucci. There is everything here. Cartier. Back here. Chopin. 
months. That's a publisher of legal books in Austria. Heindel chocolate. Demel is very famous for chocolate things, chocolate cakes. Massimo Dutti, Ermene Gildo Zegna. Chopin was here when he was in Vienna. He lived right in this building on the fourth floor from May. From November 1830 until July 1831. Tiffany, Michael Kors. <clears throat> and we walk on here and over there. The street meets Graben. It's an even bigger street with many shops right in the center of Vienna. But you can see it's quite quite crowded today. It's Saturday 5.30. Shops, some shops still open. So in Vienna, on Sunday, most shops are closed. Almost all shops are closed. Only on train st at train stations, supermarkets are open, and out. but most shops are closed on Sunday. You shouldn't work on Sunday. You should go to church or chill or do something else. So that's Graben. Cartier is close already. Joseph Fountain. On the left. Then this column in the middle with the gold top. That's the Pestsäule, Grabensäule. It was erected. Uh, when there was the Black Death in Vienna. Grappenkirche. So, that's how it will be when you come here. Always tourists here. And right at the end of Graben, the St. Stephen's Cathedral appears. Just the St. Stephen's Cathedral is the very center of the city. All the city was built around the cathedral. Again, like the old days in the um, Medieval times, Middle Age, all the cities were built around the churches, around the church, around the cathedral. <laughs> Gothic style. So many people today, always on Saturday, it's like this. 
That's also an interesting building, actually, Stock im Eisen building. One of the oldest buildings. They have a beautiful, beautiful gate. Yeah. With beautiful artwork. And on the corner, there is the stock in my and there's the stick in the iron, where there is a saying that in the Middle Ages, workers were coming here and leaving one nail inside this trunk. That's Kärntner Straße. Carinthian Street. Carinthia is a province in Austria which is leading us to the Opera House, what I'm about to show you next. This is the State Opera building. shop the hall of fame like in hollywood they have actors in here or stars of composers or or the conductors or singers opera coffee Gustav Mahler monument on the left, pretty modern monument, it's just one year old or so, it's pretty new. And here is the main entrance, normally come from the metro here, and go here, inside, or you choose the main entrance, which is here. I'm not sure if it's open now. Is it? No, it doesn't seem so now. We have guided tours here. Here you can get a guided tour. And on this side of the opera, the left side here, right under the arcs here, there's the waiting space for the guys, people who want to get a standing ticket. Standing tickets are the cheapest tickets. They start at three euro. 3 euro, euro when you're down in parterre and 4 euro when you're up in the gallery it's a very cheap price all the tourists normally 
go there. Of course, if there are some stars, like Netrebko, big opera stars, big singers, conductors, then you have to line up here two hours before. So, so then here, this place is all queue. So that was it from the opera.